Spiral is the ninth film in its series, but as the subtitle from the Book of Saw indicates, this edition isn't part of the long continuity of stories about the serial killer Jigsaw, it just takes place in his universe. While Spiral takes place long after Jigsaw's death, in the same city where he did his killing, the connections to the throughline end there. It doesn't share any of its characters, motives, or histories with the franchise, and that inconsistency leaves a gaping hole in Spiral that isn't filled in with anything proportionately interesting. Spiral is directed by Darren Lynn Bisman, who also directed Saw 2 through Saw IV. In those chapters, he oversaw the death of Jigsaw, the rise of his co-conspirators, and the height of the Tortious Rube Goldberg contraptions that made the Saw series infamous for its complicated, overplanned methods of killing people Jigsaw deemed no longer worthy of life. Initially, Jigsaw's targets were people who had either given up on appreciating the gift of life, or powerful but crooked people who'd lost interest in maintaining fairness and justice. In Jigsaw's eyes, drug addicts and corrupt cops deserved punishment, but his plans always included some thin veneer of redemption and education, however impossible or painful those lessons might be. The roots of the Saw Empire are more an ultra-violent version of Thornton Wilder's classic play Our Town than they are random killings. But Spiral is a watered-down version of the core elements that make a Saw movie into a Saw movie. Photo. Brooke Palmer, Lionsgate Like many of the other Saw films, Spiral starts with an excruciating death. Detective Boswick, Letterkenny's Dan Petronievich, follows a thief down into an underground train tunnel, gun drawn, so he can enforce the law and save the day. When they reach the tracks, it becomes clear that the pursuit was a ploy to lure Boswick into a premeditated setup, and he isn't long for this world. The tension and blood flow start strong in Spiral, which is one advantage for series fans. The rest of the film follows Chris Rock as Detective Zeke Banks, who's going undercover with a group of criminals who are targeting another group of presumed criminals in a hotel room, before making a nearly smooth getaway. Zeke is brought in to answer to his captain, Angie, Marisol Nichols, for disobeying his assignment to the Homicide Squad. That dressing down turns into a scene of backstory and exposition, revealing Zeke's history of turning in corrupt cops, the reasons he can't trust other officers, and the fact that his father, Samuel L. Jackson, is a decorated retired captain whose shadow Zeke will never escape. This sort of plot vomit can be useful for quick and dirty explanations of premise and character motivation, but Bisman and writers Josh Stolberg and Pete Goldfinger never seem confident that their audience will remember the details. They repeatedly flash back to this exchange, to remind the audience what was said.